Hey guys, it's Tim from the Spotlight coming at you with another review, this time of another all-new, all-different Marvel title, Extraordinary X-Men number one. This issue starts off with Magic in New Delhi responding to armed military attacking a girl who has been going through a new mutation and is being affected negatively by the Terrigen Mist. Meanwhile, Storm is now trying to build a new safe place for mutants to go in the vein of Professor Xavier and trying to respond to this new threat that has been arising from the Terrigen Mist. She begins tracking down previous members of the X-Men, including Jean Grey and Colossus, in order to help build up their ranks in order to help mutants in the future. Especially since an unexpected occurrence has taken place due to the Terrigen Mist on that will affect the entirety of the mutant population. All in all, I feel that this issue is a solid start to the series, though I have my own personal gripes with it. And one of the major ones being that it feels like every X-Men story with a few outliers has been almost exactly the same ever since M-Day. The mutants have something going against them, and we must stop it, and everyone is against us, and something bad is always happening, and I am honestly getting really tired of this story with the X-Men. That and... Storm being the next person in the never-ending conga line of people trying desperately to live up to the example of Charles Xavier and how did you make it look so easy. And honestly, all I ever think when I hear this is, you know, Professor Xavier was a great guy. He's not as amazing as everyone thinks he was. He's not God. He was a good guy, but he had faults, and for some reason everyone always thinks that he did everything perfectly, which honestly, he didn't. He made Cyclops the leader of the X-Men, so clearly he made many mistakes along the way. And my final little personal gripe, which isn't as big as the other ones, is for the life of me, I do not understand why is Jean Grey still in this timeline? At this point, she's just sort of living her life in this new timeline without even entertaining the idea of going back to where they took her from. And I don't get why no one is more on this. Why is everyone letting her just live in the present? But there are positives to this issue. For example, I really liked the interaction between Colossus and Ileana. It showed a lot of growth between their characters and it's probably the most equal the two have ever been in an interaction with one another. And on a side note, Colossus has basically just become Zangief at this point, based on the new character design that they gave him, which is amazing. There's even a scene of him scaring a bear away from his farm, and all the other characters are pretty solid too. They're distinct and they set up new plot threads for all of them to go along, especially with Nightcrawler and the last character who's introduced in the last few pages of the issue. The art is... Uh, pretty par for the course for Umberto Ramos, so if you like his art, you're gonna like it here. If you don't like his art, you're not gonna like it here. Personally, I like his art, so I think the art is very welcome to me, and it's very distinct and colorful, and shows a lot of emotion. All in all, I give this issue a 7.5 out of 10. It's a very solid start, but it's starting on a fairly weak story thread, which I'm sure will interest a lot of people, it just doesn't interest me personally, and it feels like we've done this over and over again. But the art is solid, the characters are solid, and Colossus is Zengi, so that really pushed it up. So, if you have a chance, I'd pick this issue up, especially if you're a fan of the X-Men, since this is basically going to be the new main X-Men book. But, until next time, this has been Tim from the Spotlight, Signing off.